Hey everybody, it's Cody from Polypixel again, and uh, in this video I'm going to go over LOD creation in Unreal. Now, I think in 414, I might be wrong, 413, doesn't matter, Unreal, or Epic I should say, um, released their own auto LOD system. Now while it's not perfect, it is awesome, I love it. Um, yeah, there's definitely things I would tweak with it, but it gets a lot of the job done very fast and saves a lot of time. Uh, if you notice in the downtown pack where you can find this car, uh, we use the LOD system. Now there's a two reasons for that. One is because it's a lot easier and my time, I could make 20 more props or I can make LODs. I'd rather Unreal make the LODs and I can make 20 more props and sell them to you guys at like a discount. So that's pretty much one of the main reasons why I did it. It saves a lot of time. Um, and the other reason is when you are exporting out to um, from Unreal, so say you only have the UE asset, you don't have the FBX file, and you export outside of uh, uh, UE, uh, Unreal for the asset, you export it out as an FBX, it won't bring in any built-in uh, LODs. So, if, like, so just break it down. So if I made three LODs for this car, put it all into an FBX, import it into Unreal, then somebody tried to export it out on Unreal, it would only export the LOD zero. It would delete the one, two, and three LODs. And then when you re-imported it, it would either, I think it would either completely erase all the LODs, so you'd have no LODs, or those other LODs would not change, and so you have only made updates to LOD zero, and they didn't propagate to the other LODs. So it was pretty hard so basically, when you brought it out, you lost content. So by, by having the LOD system built in um, Unreal, when you export it out, you're not losing any hidden assets that we created. It's all there. So having said all that, I'm just going to quickly break down how the LOD system works on like a practical level. Like, Sure, there's like a lot of bells and whistles that Epic probably went over, but um, me as an artist, like, how does it apply to me? So right away, there's these awesome features. They just got these preset groups. You go into your LOD settings and um, you just click them and it will apply right away. Uh, I'm just gonna go no. So I don't really know which is what. I think you have to play around with these to find out best which or which ways to get like the best results. So foliage, vista, obviously these are like big terms. If um, deco, I don't even know what that means. Decoration? whatever large prop i'm assuming like if you're doing like a water tower or like a thing level architecture that's probably a big building small prop that's probably like a bench so it's like okay i have a bench hit it and all it's really doing is it's doing the draw distance and how much it's reducing so like i said you have to play with these around play around with these yourself or you can just do it all yourself so i to say i went small prop hit yes and uh I believe I have LEDs now. So I click LED one, two, three. And they look pretty good. Like, obviously LEDs don't look good, but as far as LEDs go, that is awesome. And you can see right up here, triangle account, 571, 1,144, 2,290, and back to the base of 4,000. So they divide perfectly and that looks, that honestly, that's fantastic. So if you want to see how these pop, you can switch it to LOD. And then what it will do is it'll automatically give you a display of how it's going to pop in game. So I'm at LOD zero. And as I back up, uh, LOD one. I can barely see some detailing in the headlights. Look at the back. I honestly don't see anything. So kind of questions if I should even have 4,000 points. That's a good LOD. Jeez. Um, wow, that is actually really impressive. See, that's what I mean. Like, this is a really... They were, like, kind of going, like, hey, do your own LEDs. Don't use your system. I think they're being modest. I think this is a very good system. Um, and, man, does it save time. Uh, so here's the other thing you have to think about is the screen size. So I was hoping that it would pop a little bit more. Um, so what they do is a screen size right here. So that's what this small prop kind of does. If I go to large prop, I think it stomps all these changes. I could be wrong. I don't think it did. 
If I go back to none, obviously I got rid of all my LODs and I'm so far I go, it's like always LED zero. So now if I go back to large, I think that's how it'll change. Because I didn't see any of the numbers change. No, they didn't change it again. So this one seems to pop a little closer. Yeah, I'm not I'm kind of confused as to like the differences between these. Like I said, I play around with these. I'm not gonna like pretend like I know what's going on. I would more often than not, recommend. If you like this setting, go with like small prop, but if not, um, use your own custom um, LED count. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna go to none. So there you go, there's the default. Now, um, I'm gonna turn off auto compute LED distances, and I'm gonna say I want, just for the sake of speed, I'm gonna only go three. Apply changes, now I have three LEDs. The only problem is, they don't reduce anything. So we got to go and say, what the heck are we going to reduce? So um, reduction settings. So right now we're going to go to 50. 50 is good. And then we're going to go to the next one. I want to say we want 25% of the base model. And that's it. And we'll have to hit apply changes. And I've got LED1. It's, it's a perfect 50% division. Go back to base there looks like there's a little bit pulling and what's nice about this is you have the flexibility so let's say hypothetically oh that's a little like it did something a little too much I don't like that pop like you can ease up the number let's try 55 or 52 55 whatever it is hit apply and see what it see what it gives you and if it's like okay that's good then you could play tweak these a little bit you could maybe make it pop a little closer you could do whatever you want I really like this system a lot now this is where it becomes important is when so I go hey, okay we're gonna do back to 50 and we're going to oh it's not gonna apply because it's already back to apply it um so screen size so what you're gonna do is this is screen size right here just follow that number so wherever you want LOD one to pop so I'm gonna go so I'm gonna look at LOD one honestly I want that pop to happen like maybe 0.4 I'm at 0.41. Yeah, 0.4. So I have 0.4. If I auto, I think I have to hit apply. I don't have to hit apply. Okay, I guess I don't have to hit apply. Oh, it does that every time. I don't know why it does that. So, anyways, I hit that 0.4, and this one just automatically goes to 0.399999. Like, oh, so there is a moment where it will switch. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna put that set 0.4. I'll put that at a 0.01 just for now. So I can see this pop. And that's the pop. That's fine. All right, now I'm gonna look at LED two. I'm gonna I have to look at this really close. So LED one to LED two. That's a pretty nasty pop. That's good. That's a classic LED pop. All right, I'm gonna want that pop maybe around 0.2. So that's like 0.4. Let's go 0.2. There we go. Now we'll go to auto. And here we go. So we got zero, one, two. That's great. Now, there are some times where um, when you're optimizing a game, you technically want everything to drop off, right? You don't want, if you're a town over, you technically, and you want this to call out. Um, or if you're a couple streets over, you want to call out. But there might be some times where there's like a straightaway, or there's, you're on top of a hill, and this is actually not calling out for whatever reason. You haven't designed the level that way. It's actually good practice to sometimes, for big objects like this, to make that last LED just a just a mess. So what we'll do is we'll turn this LED and we'll go, you know what, you're gonna be 1%. Let's see what this looks like. It's gonna look like a nightmare. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. I'm not even kidding. 44 triangles, but what we're gonna do where, where is this gonna look good? Uh, all right, I can't. Maybe a little right there. Yeah, there we go. It's right there. What's the screen size on that one? Point zero two. There we go. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll get very liberal with this. Go point zero three. Now we go auto. There, there's the pop. Can you tell? No. 
So even though it says like, oh, it's the last LOD is 500, that's pretty manageable. Sometimes you just want to push that last LOD to a complete disaster because when it's not occluding out or you don't have like level streaming set up in a certain range, it's always good to hedge your bet, make this thing a uh, last LOD an ugly nightmare, but obviously at a distance that you can't see. And then that's pretty much high LOD in Unreal now. That took like five minutes, 10 minutes of me, with me explaining it. This is infinitely faster than I had I built this all by hand. Now, is it as pretty? Probably not. If I went to wireframe and I went to LOD1, it's probably going to do a few things that I wouldn't have done, but we're, we're talking very minimal stuff, and I have my... I have to refocus there. We're talking very minimal stuff, very minimal like adjustments, and it's so much faster. And now you can export out of Unreal. Chain, make your changes to LOD0, bring it back in, and then the LOD system will take care of itself. So I've had that a million times before as like a destruction artist on a vehicle team, like uh, working on like Battlefield doing vehicle destruction. It's like every L like I'll say I ripped this bumper off. Well, I have to rip that bumper off the LOD1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, I want a damage state too. Uh, I got to do a damage state for LOD1, 2, 3, 4. It becomes a nightmare of management of assets and a management of time. And so you just do it once, you bring it in, let the auto LOD system come into play. Now, there's other auto LOD tools that you can use, like uh, Simply Gone, but the one that Unreal provides is free, and it is does a very sufficient job for being free. Now, there are... Now, yeah, so here's one that I say I have a little bit of qualms with it. So I have used um, LOD creators in the past, and what they can do is they can make proxy models of your assets. So I'd say, hypothetically, I had a building with... Um, Actually, I can probably even bring up the building right now. Yeah, that's a, a better idea. So let's say I have this building. This building has six elements to it. Now, that's a lot of materials to have on like one asset. But it's a big asset. That's going to take up a whole city block. It's massive. It's not a big deal. But when you're LODing this building, you don't want you want the materials to drop out as much as you want the, the polygons, the tri-count to drop off. Because you want to... Um, read less materials, you want to, like, you don't want to have all these materials, like, maybe this brick is small, or maybe, like, it's only using this ledge. You want it to start, have things fall off. Now, that'd be nice if you could say, LOD2, I want to kill this material. Now, that could be meaning apply the other material to it, or delete all the polygons that are using that material. Whichever the case, there are better ways to do LODs, and it is not a perfect solution. So, um, I should be warned, um, it has a long way to go to, for, for Epic to build a right nice LEDs tool, but for, you know, reducing tri-counts, it is fantastic. Um, that's probably like, yeah, that's probably my biggest qualm with it. Um, that and I don't know what any of those values mean. Um, I, I, they don't really explain it. Now, I'm pretty sure these are legacy files from the SimplyGon, because this used to be built in just for SimplyGon plugins. So if you own SimplyGon license and you had it in Unreal, you would get these, and then these were associated with SimplyGon um, functions. And then when Unreal brought it in, their own LOD system, they just kind of adopted these values. So they don't really mean anything. They're kind of arbitrary. Like I said, I would probably go ahead and build your LODs uh, yourself. Um, so yeah, that is how to do LEDs in Unreal. There's like, it's very simple, uh, very easy to use, and uh, I I give it a two thumbs up. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, thank you guys for your support.